Hey, buddy. Where are we going? We going Copart? Max says, I like Copart. What's up guys, Big Life 300 here, and we are sitting in South Carolina today. We are on our way to Syracuse, New York, to pick up a fifth wheel camper. Not only, oh, there you go, almost saw an accident right in front of our face there. We are picking up a Keystone Avalanche 300 RE. It's at Copart in Syracuse, New York, and we've only seen the pictures of it, but everything looks to be functional, and we are going to go up there and get it and bring it back to Atlanta, and uh, y'all are going to watch that entire process. Well, we've got 12 hours and 45 minutes to ride until we get to Syracuse, uh, Copart to pick up the avalanche, so if I stop, sleep for five hours, I will get there uh, probably around noonish. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? What are you doing, buddy? Huh? You want to go? Huh? You want to fight, bro? Huh? You want to fight, bro? Huh? Huh? Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the channel. If you are new to the channel, my name is Mike, and this is Street Speed 717, which is generally going to be about six and a half inches you have to set the nose of the fifth wheel up, of course, higher than you might want to. Now, of course, having too much rake with the front of your fifth wheel is never a good thing. You don't want the front sitting atrociously. You want a plane. Race, race, race. Well, about three o'clock in the morning, I decided it was safer for me to stop, get some sleep for a couple hours, but I woke up to this. Here in, uh, we're in street speed 717 territory now, people. Well, we have arrived at Copart. Your destination is ahead on the right. Copart, Syracuse, North. I know, you're so excited. You're so excited. All right, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna get the paperwork done on this thing. Come back out here. I'll see what condition this unit's in. So what we're gonna do is they usually bring everything out here on a big front end loader they pick the cars up they got giant forks on them and then they bring them out here like that one and so they don't actually crank and drive these things they pick them up forklifts the rvs are obviously too big for them to lift with the forklifts so what they do is they'll come escort us in with the truck we've been granted permission to come back here on the lot and this is pretty much what copart lot looks like some are in uh Okay shape, some like these, not so much. And so they got stuff in front of it. He's gonna have to get out of the way for us so we can get in there and get to it. So we got her hooked up and this is her. This is what a good Copart unit looks like. Everything so far seems to be working. All the hydraulics were down when we picked it up. They all came right back up with no problem. I have a hydraulic leak on that one right there. Um, the only outside damage that I could find, this handle right here. That was the only problem I saw. There she is, hooked up behind the truck. So as y'all see there, they use the forklifts to set the vehicles onto the trailers. We're gonna put some miles behind us. We're gonna have over 39,000 by the time we get back. So 
So I've seen this uh, that's kind of trend on YouTube. I saw one video six months ago and saw another one, another one. And what I'm talking about is these YouTubers who are going out and they keep buying these um, Copart campers. So you go into this thing completely blind, um, kind of hoping that you can trust Copart's description. But you have to understand that Copart is in this to make money. And if they post up on their website, this is a flood unit and it smells like fish and the floors are soft and the TVs don't work and the tires are dry rotted and the hydraulics don't work and the slides are stuck out. It's not gonna bring a lot of good bids. It's actually probably not gonna bring a lot at all. Campers are not like cars where you can look at it and go, oh yeah, the front end smashed in. That's what's wrong with it. Something can look perfect and be a total nightmare. Copart is not in this to help you. They're in this to make as much money as possible. It's, it's a buyer beware system. Now Copart classifies their campers in pretty much three different categories. They have a clean title unit. Maybe it was a theft. Maybe it's a repo. Then you have what's called a salvage title. Now, a salvage title is what you think it is. Something has happened to it. It has damage to it. It needs to be fixed but it can be reissued a title of some sort, shape, form, or fashion. The third classification is called a junk certificate or a certificate of destruction. And the one who decides if a unit gets put on a junk title or a salvage title, or a, I'm sorry, certificate of destruction or a salvage title, the insurance company and the insurance adjuster. And I have seen units, for example, the repair guy, I just watched his video on his new camper he bought it really is, is not that bad and it has a non-repairable salvage title or certificate of destruction on it and he cannot get a title issued back on that unit those are units that you kind of want to stay away from what the insurance company has decided is that that unit is has no value to it past scrap value and it should not be allowed to be back on the road with other people people buy those units and they put them on uh, property and they live in them they put them on their hunting properties now as far as damage goes you have units that have exterior burns units that have interior burns units that have roof damage units where a car is sideswiped on people roll them into a ditch uh, units where somebody rear-ended the person and they came off the trail off the back of the truck and broke the tongue um, look at damage on these things but the three primary the main really two things that I kind of look for a water flood damage unit and I'll get into that in a second a little more or what's called a um, dents and scratch uh, and then the third thing if you could put a third category is hail mainly the main ones that get purchased are flood to be flood units one thing that is guaranteed to the copart auction is that when you buy it you own it and all the problems that come with it the problems that they have advertised and the problems that they have so this is what I'm talking about this is an example of a flood unit and that's what this was randy a flood unit I don't know. this wasn't a flood unit i don't know yes it was a flood it was unit. a flood unit okay so the outside looks fine to the layman's eye there's nothing wrong with this camper until you open the door and go look inside it what? he only paid thirty seven hundred dollars for this unit Like a right so that was what i was going to show everybody is that so this is where this, this was sort of a uh flood unit but you picked it up and it's got damage here on the side which all this got to be replaced that's soft and wet it's got a damaged um awning there um and it's got serious damage on the roof oh it stinks so as you can definitely tell this thing was flooded bad and it smells absolutely horrible it smells like what my grandparents mobile home smelled like it's just bad it's just musty it smells like an old garage um you can see the roof has problems right there roof falling down so this is something that on paper and in the pictures of the listing looked really good yeah i saw that up there too oh yeah i see the roof i didn't even see the roof so on paper copart made this look really good which 
if you look at the other side, it's not really that bad. And they took all their pictures. It definitely was in a flood. So you can see where the spray foam is right. wet and falling out. So this side looks great. They only take the pictures from like here up. They don't show you the floors where it got wet. They try to hide that stuff. It's a 14 model. It's gonna cost, call it eight. And this unit is $20,000 retail. So you can get you a deal on it, but it's always a gamble. Again. Well, appreciate you guys tuning in today. Thank you for watching and patronizing the channel here. Uh, we're going to be doing some more RV content. So if you guys like the RV stuff, um, we will be doing more RV content here in the next actually couple of weeks here. Uh, this RV, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of it in the next few days, uh, doing a whole process of how and how to uh, uh, open it, everything up, set the whole unit up. Uh, I'm going to do a tutorial on the LCI2 system. Gonna do a tutorial on how to hook and unhook a fifth wheel camper. Um, but yeah, be watching for that video coming up here pretty soon. And as always, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Thank you guys very much for watching Vic Life 3 Double O.